Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. It feels like as of maybe today, we're flipping the switch into spring. Like we have, I think it's supposed to be 50 some today. Yeah, it's been really cold, like yeah, abnormally been, cold for us. We are probably three, four weeks behind. Oh, I would say maybe only like two weeks behind. I don't know, I we think. have snowdrops blooming just now. And usually they're long done yeah, by this point. Yeah, last year, do you remember how early a lot of the tulips were coming up? Yeah, and like daffodils are this tall yeah, right now. And tulips are this tall. Well, I looked up, I have a photo from this time last year of Benjamin running through a sprinkler. In March, middle of March. It was like the first time I had turned on the sprinklers mm -hmm. just to like check and make sure that they were yeah, all working. Yeah, it was still like cool, obviously. It wasn't summertime warm, but Benjamin was so excited. But we probably had a couple days that got up into the 60s and, and mm -hmm. maybe even low 70s. Yeah. You know, because we'll have that, like kind of mm -hmm. that fall spring. We still had, last night was 27, and we still have several nights in the 20s, but I, at this point I'm planting containers and I'll just throw some cloth over them if we need to. Uh, we're just gonna kind of forge ahead. And you know, every year is a little bit different, clearly. Um, and it's there's pros and cons. Like it's been nice because I feel like we've had time to do things. Like we're doing some inside projects right now um, that we oh, haven't had yeah. time to tackle in past years, like especially this time of year. Uh, so like painting and molding and stuff like that is going on inside. Uh, which is really, it's a, a fun thing to have fixed, but yeah, it's just, it's just weird. But everybody here, like the, um, the whole mood of everybody is pretty high because the snowpack in the mountains is really great, which that's where we, our water comes from. That's how we irrigate. Um, uh, and yeah, so everybody's like, farmers yes. are going to farm another year. Yeah. <laughs> farmers are happy. It's funny here. You know, I know like in the Midwest, they pray for rain here the farmers don't really pray for rain as much as they pray for snow yeah like we just need the snow in the mountains mm -hmm. and then we'll be able to irrigate we get too much rain and our soil doesn't know what to do with it yeah right like it can't absorb it it's weird it just kind of like it creates flooding issues so we have to have like slow and steady sort yeah. of watering anyway let's jump into the videos from this past week the first one was propagating fig cuttings planting butterfly peas and a studio tidy up so that was on kind of a crummy weather day um, and i just had a few projects so i cut some branches off of our chicago hardy fig i've never propagated a fig before so it's an experiment they're looking pretty good in here like i haven't rooted around because it's only been a few days to see if they're forming roots yet but Butterfly peas are in uh, the soil. They have not germinated yet, but that can take upwards of three weeks for them to germinate. And then we cleaned up in here uh, to make room for Aaron's new desk, which is now here. You need to put some stuff on it, Aaron. It's clean. Yeah, Maybe it don't put some stuff on it. <laughs> it looks so good. But if you don't put stuff on it, then you'll probably find some seed trays on there here pretty soon. It's one of those uh, sit stand desks. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for it to be out here because whenever I do work inside, you know, inevitably, like, Samantha will come up and, you know, want to hug and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like to do that, but also that it's... It's a distraction. It's a distraction. Yeah. So, and especially when I'm editing, you know. Mm -hmm. So, anyway. Lisa said, what kind of rooting hormone do you use, please? I've tried the same method, but a different hormone, and mine didn't work. Uh, mine's called Dip and Grow. It's a liquid that you put the concentrate in a little cup and then fill it up the rest of the way with water and then dip your cuttings in it. Uh, and, you know, based on what I saw when I was kind of seeing how people take fig cuttings and root them. I did a little video watching prior to doing that project. Um, some people use rooting hom hormone and some people don't with pretty much the same luck as far as I could tell. Um, so I'm not sure that it's absolutely necessary with this one, but the dip and grow has worked really well for me in the past. So Aaron said, maybe a ridiculous question, but could any seed starter trays melt on a heat mat or plat pad? I don't think so. I mean, I would think the melting point of plastic would be far too high. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a, a ridiculous question at all, uh, but they're pretty a low gentle, a low gentle heat, and that's what we have um, the butterfly peas and the fig cuttings on to keep the soil nice and warm. Usually keeps it about like ten or so, maybe a little bit more than ten degrees warmer than the ambient temperature temperature that came out weird in the room. Uh, Robin said, "Why do you have pine cones in with your fig tree?" Uh, just wondering if there's a reason or some something I don't know about. I put pine cones on top of my plants uh, to keep the cats out. Works really well. Cats do not want to paw through pine cones. They're too prickly. Plus, it looks kind of fun. Decorative. Yeah. Although, I'm starting to lose pine cones in that pot because Samantha likes to take them out and put them in other yeah. in other areas. Patricia said, how many hours a day do you think you work? Do you block off time in the morning or afternoon or does it depend on the day ahead? It would be so hard to actually come up with a number because every day is different depending on the project, depending on if you have like an actual start time, which sometimes you do. Um, our projects can usually kind of flex a little bit depending on 
whatever in weather that sort of thing what other things you have to take care of that day um it accumulates to a full days of work but or a full yeah, day of work but a it's lot just more blah. than a full day's work yeah. i think it's hard to know exactly what you would count as work and what you wouldn't mm-hmm. because our work is so intertwined with our personal lives mm-hmm. but um and also with a don't you think with creative jobs you spend a lot of mental energy thinking about how to do something as well i think maybe that's more your department i just like do do projects yeah well like i'm i'm interfacing more with our sponsors and things like that and so i'm thinking i do zero of that yeah you Mm -hmm. don't it doesn't even come up in your brain really but i'm thinking like how do we because sponsors are really helpful they make the world go round. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we really wouldn't have any entertainment on television or anything without yep. commercials and sponsors. So that's, just, it has to be there. Um, but you want to integrate it in a way that it makes sense mm-hmm. and isn't like overt and, you know, is mm-hmm. annoying for people. Yeah. It needs to be on, on point. Mm-hmm. So like I spend a lot of mental energy thinking how to incorporate. Yeah. And I think we've done a pretty good job. I think so. To where it's not annoying at least. Yeah. I do know that my work day is, sh- in yours too, we kind of shift it a little bit. Like our work day starts a little bit later in the morning and it ends. Like my work day ends anywhere between midnight and two in the yeah. morning. I stay up really, really late. Um, yeah. We need to quit doing that. I know. It's so bad. It's so bad. Ugh. Sheila said, question, in the, is the high humidity in your studio harmful to your camera equipment? I did talk about the high humidity in here. We have a dehumidifier. I forgot to turn off. Hopefully that's not too loud of a hum. Should oh, I turn yeah. it off? Here, yeah, let's turn it off. See if it changes. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> we I are bet. not going to restart the video. No, we are not. <laughs> Maybe okay. it didn't pick up in the cameras, but it was very loud. That was very loud. My goodness. Uh, we haven't seen any adverse effects on our cameras up to not this point. anything at all. But we run that dehumidifier all the time and we dump everything out. It's only a short amount of time that the humidity is high. It's only during seed starting season. So it's just a matter of weeks in here where the humidity is like that. And then once those are out, it's just regular house plants and those don't do. Like, it's pretty dry in here. Eric said, does anyone feel like YouTube is hiding or delaying Garden Answer videos in the morning? Recently, I've been having difficulty finding their new video first thing at 7. Garden Answer is really the only show that I watch regularly. It used to always be right at the beginning of my queue. Any thoughts? Yeah, that's really strange because I know that, you know, YouTube's primary goal is to get you to stay on the platform for as long as possible. So I would think if if that's really all you're watching, that it would want to serve you that content you know, and older garden answer right. videos. Cause it's like, oh, this is what you like to watch. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, the algorithm is also trying to probably broaden your horizons and mm-hmm. like, well, if you like garden answer, you might also like this. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of like recommended stuff going on mm-hmm. and they've gotten away from that whole like subscription model where um, you subscribe to a channel and it notifies you every time. Um, you can still, can you still do the bell? Is that You can thing? still ring the bell, but I don't even think that that uh, notifies you every time. Oh. Um, you almost have to just like go search it, mm. you know, every time. So I don't, there's nothing we can really do. It's just, it's the kind of the way YouTube the, being the model. YouTube. Yeah. yeah. I've seen other creators, they get really mad about it or they'll post a lot about it on other social platforms saying mm-hmm. like, you know, people are being unsubscribed and I don't know that YouTube is actually unsubscribing you, but I think that they are removing certain channels from your recommended feed. Mm. So it feels like you've been unsubscribed. Sure. Even though you haven't. I don't know Our motto is just to like, well, mine is just nose down. Keep Forge on going. Ahead. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah, there's ups and there's downs. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we've been dealing with probably for the last like six months, an issue on Facebook where we make almost nothing on Facebook anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to, that used to be like a, a revenue stream for us. Mm-hmm. And we, they like demonetize all of our videos because of music. It's gotten to the point where I kind of don't even want to post there anymore because mm-hmm. it feels like, but then... I, I'm like, oh, I should post it because people watch it yeah. and we should try to be helpful to people. Mm-hmm. In, you know, it shouldn't be all about just, you know, making money. Yeah. It's a business at the same time, too. I know, you know? but you like, got to have a good balance there. Yeah. So we keep posting there, even though it, 
makes me mad every time. Well, and all the music we use is licensed. We pay for it. Yeah, so that's mm-hmm. the thing that's frustrating is that you pay money for music and then you post it on Facebook and they demonetize it and then you can't make money on it, but you like you spend a lot of time and effort into something and you, you want to be rewarded. Mm-hmm. Everybody that goes to any job ever wants a monetary reward for yeah, their work. For their you know work. what I mean? Yeah. Like It's not an abnormal thing. <laughs> yeah, like everybody would quit their job if they just quit, stopped getting their you know paycheck. So uh-huh. I don't think that it's like, you know, morally wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to to want to get paid, but um, but there's what the point is there's ups and downs to every social media platform yeah. given the time and, and you change. just got to ride you out stick the out, waves. Yeah, you stick stick it out long enough and it'll change. Maybe to your benefit, maybe not. But then stick it out again and then maybe it'll change to your benefit. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. It, that's what we've seen over how long have we been doing Ten this now? Ten years now ish. I think it'll be nine years this June. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess 24. I get confused. I keep every every day that I post a video, I put it in the tenth season of Garden Answer. But oh. you're right; it's like we we're started in 2014. So next year will be our 10 year anniversary. Yeah. What? Last question on that video is from Andrea. Do you and Aaron play baseball? So I was showing there are certain things like toys for the kids and things that we keep in here because we, I don't want like, spiders getting into the baseball mitts and things just get gross. They get covered in dirt and like fertilizer powder and just junk out there in the open part of the barn. So I have a basket with our mitts and and baseballs. Neither of us play baseball, but we like to throw the baseball around a little bit. Yeah. So I don't know if Benjamin loves to throw the baseball around yet, but get there. Yeah. He needs to work on that hand-eye coordination a little bit. (laughs) Next video, finally covering up the pipes under the Hartley saying, why didn't I do that sooner? I'll tell you why. It took me two days. To do yeah, you knew it was really going to be a beast. Two days and five fabric choices later. Like, I don't know what the deal is with me, but now when you come, have fabric for other projects. I do. See, you get it. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I just know anything like that with fabric or paint. I always like. I need to see all my options, but like I need to see them physically in my space, which means I have to buy stuff. And I just I put off so many projects because I know it's going to create this monster. And then I'm going to have stuff that I need to go store or whatever afterward. Anyway, I'm super happy with how it turned out. Um, we ended up with kind of like this really muted herringbone kind of pattern. It's a uh, dark brown and dark gray. And it's just very like it, it matches perfectly with the grout um, in the bricks and with the stone floor. It doesn't scream at you, but it just hides all the pipes and stuff. And then I also got some baskets to hide our soil bags, garbage can, and our hose. Heather said, Laura, do you, Garden Answer, have an Amazon store or a link to Amazon that lists some of your favorite Amazon products? Yeah, I set one up. Did you? Um, like a m- month or two ago. Oh. And I really need to get in there and update it. Those kinds of things, you know, it's it's hard because we don't like necessarily recommend that people buy a lot of the stuff that we promote. We don't recommend that you buy it from Amazon. Like if you need Espoma soil. Mm-hmm. Amazon's not really the best place to get it. Go to your local garden center. Yeah, it's like the shipping is expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, the price is is built into where it makes sense for shipping. Mm -hmm. It's going to be cheaper just to go to your garden center and pick it up. Yeah. So. It's more of just a list of the things we use, right? I haven't even looked at it. I kind of remember you mentioning maybe you were going to set one up. Yeah. Like that's how out of touch I am with that end of what's going on. Uh, Laura said, your project turned out great. Question on your hot water heater. You mentioned you had to replace it with a larger size as the smaller one didn't produce enough hot water. What size tank was the small one and what size tank did you replace it with? The first one was a tankless. So I don't think that there was a tank. and There is a filter too, which I know that that restricts flow and there's something with the flow that the filter restricts that makes the water heater not work quite properly. He, he was explaining it to me. I was yeah. like, uh, I don't care. Just put something in there that's going to make, <laughs> make it work. Maybe I can run out there afterward and we can put on the screen what it is because I want to be helpful. Sandy said, just wondering if you've considered using the Hose Link 10 meter compact portable hose reel in your beautiful Hartley. You know, I have never tried that one. If it pulls out like the other ones, I think that's going to be a little bit too hard in the Hartley. The thing I like about the fabric one is that it's so loose and so moldable. It doesn't kink. And I just grab the the wand now and I just pull it out of the basket and it winds around everything. Mm -hmm. There's no like click, 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 click. You know, it just, it's really easy to use. And I talked to my mom into actually took it down to Andrews because they have an RO system to water their houseplants. And I remember how long it would take me and it, it's still taking the gals down there forever because you have to stand at the RO at the sink and fill up individual watering cans. 
to water everything. You guys have seen how many houseplants are in their shop. I have so many. And I told them They're my not mom, using that tank thing anymore? It, well, the, it just, the pressure doesn't work. Oh. And even then it runs out pretty fast. Oh, okay. So I told her, like, you have a regular hose connection on the end of that RO system. I bet you I could hook this fabric hose up and it'll reach most of everything in this room. I will prove it to you. <laughs> so I brought my hose down and we did it one day. So she ordered a hose as well because it's just like, it doesn't They're super not, cheap. They are super cheap. So even if you have to buy one a year or even two a year, if it starts to fall apart, because I can speak nothing to the quality. In fact, I mentioned that hose and now I, you can't get it. I don't think it would hold up to being outside. No, no, no. This is an interior hose for sure. Um, so that particular one that I have in the Hartley, it's no longer available. I can't find it. Um, so my mom ordered a different brand. I think any kind of like fabric collapsing hose, it's probably about the same. Yeah. Um, anyway. They're probably all made by the same people anyway. Maybe, maybe, yeah. But and different just, companies are selling them under different names. Most of them come with that little like squeeze trigger, little hose. That, I hate those. The little... I have to use Dram Wand on everything. Um, so I took that off and put my own Dram Wand on there with the thumb valve. Mm -hmm. And it's great. I love it. Yeah, hopefully people don't see your recommendation for that and are like, I'm going to go use that in my garden. Cause I don't, oh, outside in the garden. Yeah. I don't think that it would hold up. To it wouldn't like, hold up in our greenhouse either. Like I use stuff out there too rough. Well, being drug across our gravel or right. things like that, I think that that would tear it up uh -huh. and the UV, like the sun hitting it, I mm -hmm. think would be harmful for it too. Like it would probably get brittle mm -hmm. and wouldn't want to like, it would just start to deteriorate. What's the opposite of contract? Expand. Expand. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Uh, K Dove said the sink skirt looks great. Random question: How do you water your air plants? I'm getting conflicting info elsewhere, so I thought I'd ask my garden guru. Uh, well, you know what? I have one right back here that I never water. Well, I do when it's a little drier in here, but like right now, it's perfect because the humidity is high enough. What? Here's how you water your air plants: You don't let them die, and they'll look exactly the same. Oh, Aaron, that is so false. What, just what be... is with your hatred of air plants? <laughs> Well, they don't look like they're alive. They're just, I mean, I know that they are, but they look dead already. And I think if they were dead, they would just like mummify. No, they would look much would more gray. Up? Yeah, they would. No. Yeah. Don't take my advice. <laughs> when I was taking care of them more frequently down at the garden center, once a week we would dunk them. Like I have a xerographica right here, which these are really drought tolerant. So these are a really great one. Um, but we take something like this and you dunk it in water, like completely submerge it for 30 minutes. And then we take it out and then make sure to place it to where the water wasn't pooling in the crown of the plant. Uh, rather, it was dripping out from it and we'd let them pretty much dry. What's that white thing hanging off of it? It's a tag. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Talancia xerographica. Anyway, the whole 30 min minutes a week for us in our dry climate worked really well. Well, you just want to make sure you let them dry so the water goes away from the middle of the plant. I think I already said that. Oh, Justin said, so I need to know, what kind of chess openings does Aaron play? Uh, Sicilian, every time. He seems like a hyper-modern hyper type of guy. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea either. What do you use? You know, I don't know. In fact, last night, okay, so... I've been, I was doing really well for a while. I was winning like 75% of my games for about a week. And then I've lost like the last 10 games that I've played. And I am like, what's wrong with me? So what I need to do is I need to, I need to do some research on openings. Mm -hmm. It's time to just get down to it. <laughs> Start studying a Start little studying bit. Start studying up. Uh, the reason I think that question was asked because Aaron was waiting for me while I went into Joanne's for fabric in the oh, car. so much rather play chess and on my phone chess. versus yeah. go into Joanne's. Yeah. Joanne's is kind of my nightmare. But well, that way we can both enjoy our outing. Yeah. Yeah. Rhonda said, could you use a terracotta or pretty pot as a garbage? Place a matching saucer on top if you want to cover the mess. Keep it on the counter right where you're grooming for convenience. I really like that idea. I might, might just use that. Tia number one said, it looks so good. Family question, how is Benjamin enjoying school? He's doing really well. He's doing yeah. really well in school. Like he's, he's reading, uh, he just semi-recently added in like the second vowel. So he's reading short and long sounds of vowels, doing really well, can write pretty well. I mean, it's, you know, five-year-old writing, yeah. uh, but it's pretty tidy. Uh, and I, it's fun because when we go on drives in the evening, he'll want to read all of the signs. Yeah. He'll be like, daddy, slow down. I can't read the signs that yeah. fast. Um, so that's really fun. And he's doing a lot of memory sort of work too, which I think is great. 
who's doing really well. Uh, Kelly said, what if you used a roll down bamboo shade type thing? I think that would give you a natural look and you could stain it to the color you like. Uh, I thought about that and I think that that would still be a really good option. It might be something we change to at some point, but I was kind of liking the idea since I have the wicker texture, you know, quite a bit of that under the, the counter and bamboo has got kind of that same look to it. I wanted something that was a little bit different and a little bit softer. So that's just what we ended up with this time around. Lila Isle of Bloom said that potting soil basket is genius. I wondered if you could add wheels to it so you can roll it in and out. That would be a good idea. Like just make a little simple wood oh, platform, yeah. little wheels, little caster so you can roll it out. Um, it would be nice like when you're getting your bigger bags of soil out. So far it's been great. Like I just really used it to get cleaning supplies out and use the garbage can so far. I got cactus soil out of it the other day. Hmm. And it was really easy, but I can see if like you have a bigger bag of soil in there trying to get it out from under the counter. I mean, the lid can open all the way still, but still. Maybe at some point we'll add that. Yeah. Ricky said, Paul and Bethany, question mark. Paul and Bethany are brother and sister actually, who work for us. And they are like a team amazing. I don't know how we would do life without them here. Well, yeah. I we've, mean. We've gone through other workers. And yeah. so you, you kind of know like, some people are good and some people aren't, and they are good. They are good. Oh my gosh. And they are so like, they're so like versatile and they're hardworking. Like they have a big skill set and yeah. they uh, keep busy. It doesn't matter like if we've given them a list or not, they're always busy and it's always stuff that needs to be done. Like mm -hmm. they can see, they anticipate the things that we would want to have done and they do it and they do it the way we would like it to be done. And it's just, we got lucky. Next video was antique shopping day with my mom and my sister. It was a really fun day. It, in fact, we were expecting a really bad weather day and that's why we, we planned it. So it was supposed to be super windy and really rainy and it ended up being fairly breezy, but the sun was out. So we kind of felt middle way through like, oh, we could have been working today, but it's also important to go do stuff like that as well. Uh, we went to a few of our favorite spots and a few, we went to a new restaurant for lunch, which, which was really fun and went to a few other new shops. So probably the last shopping trip for a while until we get to dog days of summer. And then hopefully at that point we can head toward, I'd mentioned in a previous shopping video that we wanted to go more of the way of Baker, kind of La Grande area, um, the opposite direction to hit some new places, but the roads have just been so bad um, that we couldn't go that way. I think, well, Boise broke a record last week. Yeah. Uh, most consecutive days in a row of measurable snow, 13 days in a row of new measurable snow. It was like we'd get snow, it'd melt the next day. Snow, melt the right. next day. But closer toward Baker and Grand, where there's mountains and you know it sticks around and the interstate was actually closed for a lot of it. Okay, Love to Garden said, no wine with lunch? Are you expecting? Uh, no, I don't plan to be expecting at any point ever again. And also probably shouldn't ask that question. <laughs> you weren't the only one. It's just so weird. It's so weird that like if I pass on wine at lunch, I don't really like wine, so I just don't order it at restaurants. Uh, if they had cocktails, I would have ordered one of those. Uh, also, if I wear a new pair of shoes. It's weird. Oh, really? People yeah, ask people that? ask that. Or, uh, I don't know. Do you like beer? No. No, I used I to. I never see you drinking beer. No, I used to drink, like, try new ones, mm -hmm. and I don't even have any interest in trying new ones anymore. Yeah. Same. Um, what? Same. So, yeah. Uh, I enjoy like the tiniest little skiff of wine occasionally with dinner if, uh, you know, it's being served, but I don't like it enough to pay for it. Yeah, right. You know, and get like a big pour. I, I feel don't... that way. So I don't like beer or wine. Uh -huh. um, although I've tried a bunch because, you know, you want to like drink socially, mm -hmm. but I just can't even do it. Um, I'm, I'm fine with cocktails. I can drink cocktails, but like, again, it's not worth the money. No. Well, and I have to look at the cocktail menu too. If... I can pretty much tell if I'm gonna like something at this mm -hmm. point, I've tried enough of them. And so I'll pass sometimes on people's cocktail menus. Cause I'm mm. like, oh no, nothing really sounds sure. that great. Um, anyway, you kind of just get that way to where you have a specific thing that you like and. Water. Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Susan said, so did your mom like her surprise from you? Tell us everything. Yeah, it was funny because she came back. My dad and, and uh, my mom came back to get her car because she had dropped it off here earlier that day when we left to go shopping. And so I didn't say anything to her. I'm surprised the kids didn't say anything because yeah, they came out I with us to drop it off. Yeah. And so they left and like not 10 minutes later, my mom's like, I didn't even, I didn't even set my stuff down. I still have my purse on my shoulder. What? She was really excited to see that on the counter uh, when she got home. Uh, Lulu said, what's, uh, 
What a fun day with mom and sis. Question, I saw on the news where the Greater Idaho Bill was passed. Was it? Uh, yeah, I think it made it through... The first like, level? Yeah, whatever the next step is. Will your town be affected if this moves forward? Yeah, it would. Um, so for those who don't know, there's a, a been a push for a while to incorporate a bunch of counties in Oregon. and Eastern and, Oregon. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's even been some... I haven't been following it closely. I know that there has been a push for some Washington counties and even some California counties to join Idaho because... W- here, the general consensus is that we don't feel like represented really by the other side of Oregon because Oregon is such a large state and there's like half of Oregon that feels m- more a part of Idaho. Because like, for example, we are 60 miles away from Boise, Idaho, which is the capital of Idaho. Mm-hmm. We are like, what is it, like a six hour drive from Salem Yeah. and even a little bit farther to Portland. Mm-hmm. So we're really far away from like feeling connected to the next largest you know, city in Oregon. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, if you're going to go do something, you're going to go to Idaho, Mm -hmm. you're going to go to Boise to go do something, you know, fun. Yeah. So anyway, the point is, we get like Idaho papers, Yeah. you know, not Oregon papers. Well, we live like as the crow files, like a mile or two from the Idaho border. We can see Idaho from our house. Right. So we're we're very close to Idaho, right? So like naturally you're going to feel more connected to Idaho than Oregon. So anyway, the idea is because the politics are more the same as Idaho and mm-hmm. less like the other side of Oregon. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, why don't we just be part of Idaho? So that's the push yeah. is to, to join Idaho. Do you think it'll ever actually happen? I just, I can't see both Idaho and Oregon agreeing to that. We should just carve it out and create a new state in between. Yeah. I can see, I can see pros and cons yeah. to it happening mm-hmm. and so i'm i'm just like in the middle where it's like if it happens i won't be mad if it doesn't happen i won't be mad i'm just i think that's you know. a wise position to take in in so many different yeah. Yeah. areas honestly like keep open mind keep yeah. an open mind to everything because you have things to learn yeah well oregon's got some good sides. things about it idaho's got some good things yeah. about it they both have things i don't like about them you know it, mm-hmm. it is what it is um Sales tax would be implemented. I, Oregon doesn't have a sales tax, so mm-hmm. we would get a sales tax if we joined Idaho. Mm-hmm. Um, Idaho has a, um, lower income tax, so we would save a little bit of money there. Do you think it'd so, come out in the wash? Kind of? I don't know. It's hard to say. I don't know. Anyways, I didn't know, I didn't know that it had passed through the first level. Yeah, <laughs> it seems like it's it's chugging along. I, I, it's, at some point, I feel like it's going to it's going to die somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, I just don't think you'll get, you need like unanimous support from both states to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think you'll get that. Sure. Uh, Sally said, have you ever gone to LA junk on Leta and Boise? It's a fun spot to shop. It is a fun spot to shop. In fact, we actually drove by it, but it was right before we went to lunch and uh, we were hungry. In fact, I was joking to Monica. I'm like, Monica, I think we're going to make this one last stop. And she was like starving. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she could just see her deflate. She's like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. We'll go to lunch. <laughs> it is a fun uh, spot to shop though. Uh, MM said, always love your shopping twist trips with your mom and sister. Weren't you talking about heading in the other direction for your next shopping trip? Uh, next horrible weather day, maybe. Yes, we will do that at some point when the weather is with us. Tracy said, what the heck is wrong with your tree? It's super green. <laughs> or is that a special color filter you were all using? Uh, we don't use special color filters, so that would be the color of the tree well, at the moment. Of, when we edit, we'll saturate a little bit to where it looks like n- n- normal. Yeah, sometimes natural. if like uh, the sun is blowing out a shot and making it look super bright and washed out, we can tweak it just a little bit to make no. it look normal. The goal is to try to make things look as accurate to real life as possible. Yeah. Uh, but that is the color of the tree right now. Usually in the spring, like when things are starting to warm up just a little bit and it's really moist, it'll have this really pretty little layer of moss and then it sort of dries up in the summertime and goes away. It's real I pretty. would imagine that kind of stuff is probably just prevalent all over like the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where it stays rainy. Yeah. Next video is potting up geranium and lettuce seedlings and a seedling tour. So pretty simple, peaceful project. It was a weekend, I think. Samantha was napping mm-hmm. and I was just like, oh some quiet time out here. I potted up all of our gera- geranium seedlings and I'm already starting to know notice like they're starting to want to beef up and explode again in their containers, which is awesome. Also, the lettuce we started right at the end of December is looking so amazing. We got some of those planted up and then I just showed you where we're at with a bunch of our seedlings. So we've had a lot of action even since that video. I always, like every time I do a seedling tour, it's always like a day or two after that the video is published. I'm like, oh, they already look different. In mm. two days time, we already have like this whole tray that didn't have anything in it. 
during that tour now has a bunch of seedlings in it, like the tray of columbine. I showed you in that video, there was nothing. Now, green. Like, it just happens overnight, I swear. Heather said, did you add fertilizer to the watering container at 1046? If so, what kind was it? Um, I did, and that was the Espoma's Liquid Grow fertilizer. Uh, I usually start fertilizing my seedlings when they put on their first set of true leaves. So not the first two leaves that come out. Those are not true leaves. It's the next set. So it'll be the third and fourth leaf that you see. Once they have those, I do half strength fertilizer once a week. And then after they've beefed up a little bit, like on the geraniums at this point, I'm doing full strength fertilizer once a week or roughly once a week. Sometimes it's 10 days or so. Was that the, uh, the one that they discontinued grow grow? I'm not they sure. Switched to indoor. I have indoor in there too. I just have, a, I had a little bit of extra grow in that. It even has the old cap. Yeah. It has that is old, probably one of the old ones. Yeah. So, uh, indoor is another one I use in there. I have some in here. This probably has the same, I'm guessing a very similar, uh, formula to grow. Anyway, I use this in the greenhouse as well. I'm going to start using some liquid bloom out there. And I also use on, so I use the Espoma Organic on all of our vegetable sort of starts in there. And then I usually use it on my flowers too, if that's what I'm mixing that day. But I also will use Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer as well. And that works really well on ornamentals, flowering things. Elle said, can you link your LED grow lights? I'm having the same problem with my seedlings being leggy and I wasn't sure what was wrong until you answered that in this video. Um, yeah, they're from Gardener Supply. These are the three tier sunlight grow sunlight gardens with the high output LED lights. But I think you can just buy the tubes. Yeah. I think you can just buy, yeah. So just Those go to Gardener Supply. Pretty nice grow, like after trying a lot of different ones. I mean, if you're gonna buy one that's pre-made, mm -hmm. you can make your own obviously. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to buy one, it seems like that's one of the nicest ones mm -hmm. we've tried. And it's addicting. Just ask my friend Katie. <laughs> <laughs> she bought one this spring, filled it up, and then she texted me recently and said, I just bought a whole second one. I just like, it's it's starting to like snowball. It's an addiction. Yeah, it is. Uh, Amariah. I hope I say that right, it's a pretty name. Question about gnats and mosquito bits. I typically put the bits in a tea bag and soak it in the water before watering the plants. Is it okay to use this on seedlings? Yes. And is it okay to use on edible seedlings, herbs, veggies? Yes. I have only ever used it on house plants, but I already have a gnat problem and have only just begun the seeds. Yeah, I would use it on everything. It's just a Bacillus thuringiensis, which somebody pointed out to me, the, the strain of BT in mosquito mosquito bits versus the natural, which is what I started to use, is a little bit different. Hmm. In, in uh, As a whole though, it's a bacteria that's found naturally in soil. It's a completely natural product that ta targets like larva, uh, caterpillars, it, we use it for um, budworms. Um, so it doesn't hurt pollinators or any of that business. It's a safe one to spray and it really does help with the problem. So yeah, I just get after it with the mosquito bits. I did the mosquito bits last year. I just, I think I was, I didn't put them in a bag, which I should have done. I probably didn't soak them in the water long enough. It just was a huge bleh, mess. L Burnsy said, how do you, did you and Aaron meet? <laughs> You're such a cute couple. We met at church. Good place yeah. to meet. Yeah. Yeah. Was it church? I think so. Sure. Yeah. Um, we knew each other kind of for years before we actually, like we both went to college mm -hmm. and came back and then the rest is history. Yeah. Our dating and engagement was 10 months. We were dating for five months and then engaged for five months before we were married. When you know, you know, that's true. Tina said, do you have a drawing of all your plans for all these seedlings? No. <laughs> I love, <laughs> I love seeing your drawings and plans. I also use drawings and pictures I take to sketch out my plans and ideas. I love to look at people's plans and ideas. I think it's so fun to see sketches. Um, there's something so charming about every single one. It doesn't even matter what the layout is, what they're planting. It's just fun to see other ideas. I don't do that with, for my seedlings. I just like, I don't know. I'm kind of chaos when it comes to Aaron smiling. <laughs> I am kind of a little bit chaos when it comes to things. It always works out and we always have stuff planted. Yeah. I do want to increase the amount of perennial activity I have in the cut flower garden. Um, so that's kind of like a thought in my brain. Who knows if it's going, going to take. Um, the maize garden will probably plant up similar few changes from last year, but I think that's going to go away as well in favor of something else. Um, I don't know. We always find spots. And if I have too many, like last year I was shipping seedlings out to friends and my mom took some, um, they always land somewhere to grow. Uh, Laura said, did you plant those pink dandelion seeds? I can't remember if you did or not. Did they turn out okay? I did them in winter sowing last year. 
two of them came up in my winter sewing jug and the jug is still sitting behind our <laughs> greenhouse from last year along with some milkweed seeds that did come up and I never planted them so hopefully same with the columbine I have columbine sitting on the floor in the greenhouse that's from two years ago winter sewing I should I just shouldn't winter sew I don't know I have no business winter sewing I do it because I get excited and I think oh this is going to be easy and then they just get kind of lost and I never well rarely get around to planting all of them I don't know simply homemade and homegrown said either last year or the year before you put heating cables in one of your raised beds and then covered with a frost cloth are you doing uh, going to do that again with your lettuce and or flowers probably not this year I think last year I put the heat cable in in the fall before the soil froze and right now our, so our soil is still frozen enough in those raised beds where I couldn't put a heat cable in there even if I wanted to um, so I've got lettuce going in the greenhouse this year. Kind of like to do different things anyway. So I'll probably do it again at some point, but probably not this year. Ellie said, how do large greenhouse operations manage fungus gnats or other bug problems? Boy, on large scale like that, they probably use similar stuff, I'm guessing, but the method of application might be a little bit different. Sure. Um, we are going to be heading to the growing facility that grows on all of our annuals for us. Uh, we're going to tour that. So I think that we could ask them and see what they do. And every facility might be a little bit different too, because I know some don't won't touch synthetics, and some will do just you know organics or a mix. You know, a zombie girl said, "When it comes to your grow lights, I have a couple of questions. In the animal world, world we have to swap out the UV lights every six months due to the UV not being there anymore, even if the lights still work. Do you have to do the same with the grow lights? Does it matter? Are the grow lights full spectrum or UV or UVB? Oh, geez." <laughs> <laughs> I haven't swapped any of mine and I haven't even heard of people swapping them out. I wonder, I'm going to look at their lights really quick and see if they note anything about that. Yeah, it says they're specialized full spectrum LEDs that are really long lasting, super efficient, plant boosting LED bulbs, um, 30,000 hours of light. It's a lot of light, a lot long life. So I haven't heard of the UV. How long do you run them? I run like, ours for 16 hours a day. 16? Mm-hmm. You said 3,600? 30, 30,000. 1,875. Days. Yeah. 5.1 years. So I get 5.1. Because I do, I don't have every single one of our um, lights on all year round. I usually have these top two shelves filled on all three of these. And then all of our bamboo LED or two of our bamboo LED grow light gardens are usually on all year, but the rest of our Oslo and the other bamboo LED grow light, those aren't on unless I have seeds in them. So yeah, even if I have them on for 16 hours a day, that'll last for a little over five years. Does that mean that they're like, on average, the light's gonna go out at five years using it the amount of time that you know you have? Or does that mean that the, like the UV goes away? At the, it'd be interesting oh, to ask them. Yeah, we should. That's a really good question, I don't know. Mindy said, everything looks amazing. Will you be pinching your geraniums? I have about 50, the same stage as yours. Thank you, uh, thank you for all that you do. I haven't planned on pinching our geraniums, uh, but I certainly could. And the last video is spring garden clean out in the rain. We just- With Samantha. With Samantha. She wants to, she says help and work or yeah. help and cook. She wants to help and do everything. Yeah. And it's really sweet. It does, it does make the process take quite a lot longer because she wants to like, Benjamin used to be like that too, but he was kind of just happy just to like be there. Yeah. Like she wants to be. She in wants it. to do what you're doing. Yeah. Like give me those Falcos. I can do exactly what you're doing. Well, oh. so yeah, it's a little bit more to like direct her energy, I guess, and still get something done. But it was it was sprinkling when we started out that day, and I thought we'll see how long we can hold out. But I started to get so wet, like I was chilled. I, I built fire when I came inside because I got wet even with my coat and hood and all that. I was wet halfway down my back, just like soggy. It was just soggy out there. Uh, but we got quite a lot done and I'm happy with it. Uh, April Nurse Who Garden says, what a fun age. She's a cutie. Does the Espoma need heat to be active for the plants to use it? Yeah, it's heat activated for sure. Um, but you know, you fertilize sometime in the spring, it's there for when it starts getting warm enough. And you know, on some of these days, I don't know how, what the temperature is. Do you know? I don't. But you know, even the amount of spring moisture we get, as long as it's not like gully washer, that's like washing soil away, which we don't have that type of rain usually, 
it's just pushing that fertilizer down into the soil a little bit closer to the root system. So when it does heat up, it's ready for the plants. Uh, Monique said, how does your rake not take all the mulch with it? I'm impressed. It is a good rake. So it's a smaller one. It's the Fiskar Shrub Rake. It's funny because I asked Aaron if he would order a couple more rakes. Oh, yeah. And then you had said that you hadn't done it yet, so I went ahead and ordered two more, and then you... But then I followed through. And then you ordered two more, so now we have, we're flush with rakes at this point. Uh, but they are nice because they're so flexible. You can run them over the top of perennials and things and not have them wreck all the leaves that might be there. And they also don't pick up a ton of mulch because of how lightweight they are. Um, at about 5.30 when uh, Samantha Grace was filming, did she look at the camera and say, hey guys? <laughs> yes, she did. Hi guys. Was that prompted? Did no. You say? <laughs> I tried after that. I'm like, can you say, hey guys, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> and she, she said, hey guys, going. Oh. Yeah. She did that after. But the hey guys, that first one was completely on her own. Raven Blue said, uh, Samantha is a great helper. Do you cut the coral berry back down every year? Yes. I have one that is going on its second year. Should I be cutting it down now? Yes, to about 12 inches tall. Um, I have this plant because of you and it's gorgeous. They are, they're just one of the better shrubs, like the most high performing gorgeous shrubs that we have. I love them. You know, we should do a video where um, you just name off, like we could do a shrub one and a perennial. Well, perennials, pretty much all you cut down to the ground, but specifically with shrubs, we should go like in order of like alphabetical order and just name off the variety or the, what do you call it? Species or genus? And then say how far to cut them down. Oh, yeah. You know? That would be an undertaking. Like hibiscus, two inches. Yeah. You'd and then just, be... you could go pretty quick though. Yeah. Just show what it looks like and show how far to cut it down and when, I guess. Yeah. Like given a warmer climate like mm -hmm. ours. Yeah, that's a good idea. Or cool, what do you call our climate? Uh, northern climate yeah cool climate yeah. yeah hazelnut said did laura stop working with proven winners yeah no. i've noticed that before um in fact i saw a comment from someone saying they stopped endorsing proven winners <laughs> like they were answering someone's question like what why would you think that well you know winter time it's hard because well we can't really do a whole lot outside i used to try really hard though to like overwinter plants to where i could be using them in a win mm. in the winter months proven winter stuff and it was just such a, it was such a fight to keep things looking good. And mm -hmm. then it's kind of frustrating because I'm doing projects that nobody else can get the plants for mm -hmm. because everybody else is in the middle of winter too. And I just was kind of tired of that. I like, I wanted to, I want to do things that are actually like naturally coming up for us and that are, are available. Like I went down to Home Depot and found this or my local garden center had this at this time. Like mm -hmm. they were carrying it and somebody else could have bought it just the same as me, you know? Um, so I used to try a little bit harder to do that. Yeah, and we don't get our, our shipments in, in our area, like our Proven Winners annuals, shrubs, all of those things come like April. So we don't sure. even have, I have some stuff I've wintered over and I'm going to be planting some things here in the next couple of weeks, but it just really doesn't start until it warms up. We have a huge order of Proven Winners annuals coming. Yeah. And they're all coming in the eco pots. Are they? Uh, like last I heard, I haven't seen them, but I'm assuming that they were all grown. Nice in the eco pots. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Ashley said, do you prune all hibiscus all the way back like that? Or is it just this, that specific hibiscus? So it's the dinner plate type hibiscus that you cut back, back like that. The Rosa Sharon hibiscus are a woody shrub and they're different. So the, the dinner plate hibiscus are treated as a perennial, cutting them back. And then the woody Rosa Sharon's are treated more like a shrub where I think they do bloom on new wood. So you can be trimming them in the late winter, early spring, but most of the time it's only for shape and that sort of thing. And that's it, you guys. That's it for our recap video. The sun is shining. I am gonna go outside. I think, were you gonna help me? Sure. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna, oh, do, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do a project in the cold frames in front of the Hartley today, I think. That's a perfect area to plant when it's still a little dicey out because we can protect everything in there. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Hope you guys are having a great day. Have a great week and we will see you in the next video. Bye.